Hi, everybody. I'm Brian Kenny, and welcome to ESPN Classics Top 5 Reasons You Can't Blame, a series that takes a fresh look at sports personalities who are remembered largely for their mistakes, controversial moments, or questionable decisions. Over the next half hour, we'll count down the top five reasons you can't blame the Minnesota Vikings for trading for Herschel Walker in October of 1989. The reasons range from an immortal hockey player to another lopsided deal you may not remember. Before we begin our countdown, let's examine the details of the Dallas-Minnesota trade. A third and 23, looking for Anthony Carter! What a pass! Touchdown! Everywhere you looked, we had a star, and we were the most talented team I've ever been on. Over three seasons, beginning in 1986, the Vikings scored the third most points in the NFL. Three receivers are all down there, including Joe, who's made a season out of catches like that. The offense was up tempo, throwing a deep ball to myself, Leo Lewis and Steve Jordan, who had outstanding speed for a tight end. Everett under pressure by Millard, and he's going to take the sack. While the Vikings' aerial attack stayed strong, so did the team's defense. In 1988, it gave up the second fewest points in the league. We had some of the greatest defensive linemen during that time. Didn't uh, the linebackers were great, and then. Myself in the secondary, um, we were just totally, totally outstanding. But for all their talent, the Vikings kept falling short in the playoffs. 87 was a strike here. That was a pretty good team. And we played Washington for the NFC Championship, and they beat us 17-10 in Washington. The following year, we were 11-5, and we uh, again went to the playoffs and got beat by the 49ers. We thought we had the nucleus to, to, to make it to the Super Bowl. Everything suggested that this team was a great running back away from getting to a Super Bowl or even winning a Super Bowl. As the 1989 season began, Minnesota and Dallas were a study in contrasts. While the Vikings were expected to have continued success, the Cowboys were going nowhere. Walsh Ford dropped the ball. Despite its impoverished roster, Dallas had one very good horse that a team with other assets might ride all the way to the promised land. Here comes Herschel. Herschel Walker, every time he touched the ball, he had, a, he had the chance or the opportunity to take it the distance. I was jogging with some of my assistant coaches, and I made the comment, we're not going to get better fast. Uh, it's going to take a long while. And what do we have on this team that's of value? And we had one Pro Bowl player, and that was Herschel Walker. In October of 1989, the 3-2 Vikings made the 0-5 Cowboys an offer they couldn't refuse. The initial trade, five players, uh, and a solid number one. Uh, conditional picks of two number ones, three number twos, one number three. Herschel, I want to uh, welcome you to uh, Minnesota Vikings. I'd like to see that thing going across that end zone about ten times a game. <laughs> I mean, everybody knew who Herschel Walker was, and everybody thought that this was going to push us where we wanted to go. Here comes Black Jesus to save us from the, the rest of the National Football League. With the grand arrival of Herschel Walker, there are simply no more excuses. In his first game with the Vikings, Walker paid immediate dividends. And Herschel's going to come out of there after he gets to the 10, to the 15, the 20. On the run, to the sideline, Herschel Walker came up the sideline and made it pay off. We won that game, and Herschel gained 148. There wasn't a doubter in the state at that stage. What they do is they give it to you and say, Herschel, run for an empty hole. Yeah. But doubt began to seep into the Vikings fan base as the team finished at 10 and 6. Walker and he gets tripped up by reason. Then Minnesota was trounced in its opening postseason game, 41-13 by San Francisco, as Walker carried only nine times for 29 yards. He was overrated for our football team. I think we had some backs that were weren't too far from as good as he was. Plus, he's past his prime. Walker, and he fumbles again. 
I just don't think our offense was built with Herschel Walker in mind. We like to use a tight end a lot. We like we like the short passing game. This was a deep eye tailback. He could run with a pitch. They didn't run that kind of offense. They didn't have that kind of scheme. Walker going to the outside and going nowhere. As Walker fizzled in Minnesota, averaging only 54 yards a game rushing before he was released in May of 1992, the Cowboys feasted on fresh talent provided by the trade. Down he goes, and Russell Maryland will get the sack. Picked off by Karen Woodson, a diving interception. Emmett Smith. As the game ends, the Dallas Cowboys and their fans can celebrate being the team of the 90s now. The picks that the Cowboys gathered from that Herschel Walker trade were unbelievable. I'm the happiest man in the world that the trade happened, three Super Bowl rings. To gift wrap a, a, a dynasty for a team with one trade, that has to gall Minnesota fans. In the unsparing light of three Dallas championships in four years and no Super Bowl appearances for the Vikings, the deal for Walker is regarded as one of the worst sporting disasters ever to occur in the land of 10,000 lakes. When we brought him here, uh, there went our Super Bowl hopes, our future hopes. Ultimately, the decision was mine. It was a decision that I made, and I'm not going to share in the blame uh, with anyone. It was my decision. Mike Lynn just completely ruined the franchise for years to come. I don't know what that man was thinking. I really don't. That had to be the worst trade in the history of sports. Before we begin our countdown of the top five reasons you can't blame Minnesota for the Walker trade, here are a few that didn't make the short list. We call them the best of the rest. Eric Dickerson and Wayne Gretzky. Eric Dickerson, I mean, he was a special player. I mean, nobody, I think, will ever be as fast as he was. Between the tackles, that guy was incredible. Dickerson went from the Rams to the Colts in a three-way trade in 1987, two years before the Walker trade. All of a sudden, now the Colts had gone from this average, low average offensive team to a playoff team. Dickerson trying to get outside, cuts up to the 30. He's at the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown! The Colts win it 24-6 to and head to the playoffs for the first time in 10 years. Wayne Gretzky is going to leave the Edmonton Oilers to go and play hockey for the Los Angeles Kings. Promise mess I wouldn't do this. <laughs> Gretzky, Canada's national treasure, was dealt to Los Angeles by Edmonton in 1988, a year before the Walker trade. When Gretzky was traded, uh, even the athletes themselves around the league in all the sports are saying, well, you know, if the team can trade Gretzky, they certainly can trade me. Shane passing deep to Taylor to Gretzky. He's gone! He's done it! Wayne Gretzky completely, you know, changed Los Angeles. You take uh, Eric Dickerson, goes to the Indianapolis Colts. And we're a playoff team. And so the Vikings look at this and think, you know, hey, we get Herschel Walker, maybe we go to the Super Bowl. Our other best of the rest, Anvari's Curse. The Vikings' fate was just the latest visitation of a Lord of the Rings-type Nordic hex involving a god named Loki who demanded that a dwarf named Anvari surrender gold to him. Anvari has one ring that he's very fond of, and he keeps that back and tries to hide it. Loki sees him and demands the ring in addition. So Anvari hands it over, and as Loki leaves, Anvari says that ring is cursed. Throughout history, Norsemen have felt the shivering effects of Andvari's curse. Among the victims, explorer Leif Erikson. Leif was the guy who discovered America. The first guy to get in inland, that's for sure. He turned around and went home. Only the disorientation of Andvari's curse could explain what happened to the Vikings 25 years before the ill-fated Walker trade. Kilmer driving for the first down, loses the football. It's picked up by Jim Marshall, who's running the wrong way. And he's running it into the end zone. The big he scored a touchdown. He scored a safety. You never saw a happier man when he turned around in that end zone. I guess if there's a curse, he's example A. Well, the Vikings are cursed. Heck, even the Burger King guy ate a chicken sandwich and ran through their defense.
Franco Harris, John Riggins, and Marcus Allen. All three running backs were key players in their team's championship seasons. If you look at the teams that win the Super Bowl, they're quality running team. Riggins. He's going to go all the way. It's going to come down to being able to run the football to make it to the Super Bowl. Gives the ball to Allen, starts inside, comes back in the other direction, and blows up the middle, blows it open, and he may score. The facts back up the conventional wisdom. Prior to the Walker trade and after the NFL and AFL merged, the Super Bowl winning team had finished in the top 10 in rushing 15 of 18 times. Bradshaw giving it to Harris, getting a key block for Mullins, running to the left, turning the corner, he's in there for a touchdown for Pittsburgh. All you got to do is look at the Pittsburgh Steelers. You really need the, the big back. You need that You need that back that can, that can control the, the line of scrimmage. The Vikings needed a big-time runner. They had finished 1988, ranked 20th in rushing. The Vikings running game cried out for help. Um, Darren Nelson didn't get 400 yards, and he was a leading ground gainer. They had also drafted D.J. Dozier in 1987 out of Penn State. Hand off to D.J. Dozier, and Dozier is out of bounds. There was a bust there. So now you've tried the traditional route, the first-round pick, to build that model. When we were drafting, we were not going to get a blue chip uh, running back. We knew that. So the only way to really find a running back was through a trade. It was what we needed. People kept blaming Minnesota Vikings or Mike Lynn for it. Uh, I think they're foolish. That brings us to reason number four. Walker was good. Herschel trying to run up the middle. He ran by a man. He ran by another one. He's stumbling to the 10, to the 5. He's twisting. Touchdown, Herschel. I've never seen anybody that destructive in college as he was as a Georgia Bulldog. Got to be Walker. Touchdown. Herschel Walker, in my opinion, was the greatest college running back of all times. First of all, he had world-class speed. He combined that with tremendous strength at 220 pounds. Ballou gives it to Walker. Herschel running inside. Move his way. You've got the perfect back. You've got the guy that can control the game with his power, and yet at any moment, he's gone. Walker's 2,411 yards with the USFL's New Jersey Generals in 1985 remains pro football's all-time single-season rushing record. When the league collapsed the next year, Walker signed with the Cowboys. In 1988, he rushed for more than 1,500 yards. Inside handoff, Walker, first down and touchdown! He wasn't a 1,000-yard uh, guy. He was a 1,500-yard guy. Over the middle to Walker, 45, 50. He was running hard on film, breaking tackles, and, and I said, you know, this guy, the guy's a stud. In his first game with Minnesota, Walker shone like an aurora borealis across the northern sky. Here's Herschel. He's got a whole look at him. Look at him. He's gone. He'll never catch him. No, he lost his shoe. I don't think you could blame the Minnesota Vikings for trading for Herschel Walker. Great players of that magnitude come along every so often. Throws back over the middle of the rocket. Trying to oh. get to the first goal he's got. He got it all by himself. When there's an opportunity to get a player of that magnitude, you do so. Kevin Mack. In his four NFL seasons, the Browns running back helped the team reach the playoffs each year. There he goes. Touchdown, Cleveland, and Kevin Mack. But his arrest for cocaine possession in the summer of 1989 put Cleveland behind the eight ball. Mack was suspended by the NFL for the first four games, and then on October 3rd was sentenced to six months in prison. Nine days later, Walker was traded. This was a team who, who had nothing but playoffs on their mind, and they knew they weren't going to get there without a running back. The Browns came to sort of the same conclusion that the Vikings did. We have one more chance, one more chance with this group. The Browns and the Vikings were in a similar situation. They needed a running back to get them where they wanted to go. With two teams lusting after Walker, his value went up and up. 
There were really, at that time, no other running backs on the market that had the marquee value of a Herschel Walker. The Vikings knew that the Browns were in it, and so they said, we have to come up with something that's going to blow Cleveland out of the box. If there wasn't a competing team, you could have said, no, this is what I'm willing to do, and I'm not willing to do anything more. Then it's take it or leave it time. Uh, but when you have a competing situation, it creates a different air of uh, negotiation. It was a bidding war. You can't blame the Vikings at all for selling the farm, so to speak, to get Herschel Walker. The Browns were willing to do the same thing. That brings us to reason number two, Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson is today the head coach of the Dallas Cowboys. At first, it appeared to Cowboys fans that Johnson, with owner Jerry Jones' approval, had sold the Brooklyn Bridge for a buck. The initial reaction, I think, was you're giving away Herschel Walker for a bag of beans and three guys who can't play. Jerry and Jimmy were, were both painted with the brush of these guys don't know what they're doing. Charged with the responsibility of returning the Cowboys to their former glory, ASAP, Johnson took an unconventional approach toward the draft. If I didn't like the players at that particular pick, I was going to move up or I was going to move down. And uh, by doing that, we uh, picked up a lot of extra picks and a lot of good players. Under the trade that I just described, Dallas selects Emmett Smith, running back from Florida. Jimmy was smart enough to go back in the collegiate ranks, remember the players that he recruited and he saw, and he drafted us. Since Johnson, Jones, and company have taken over with the Cowboys, they have made 26 trades. The talent that we had at University of Miami was better than what the Cowboys had. And so we continually revolved the door until we found the talent that we wanted. That's what built the Cowboys dynasty. I mean, you got to make the picks. You got to get the right people with those picks, which they did. Dallas, your Cowboys are still champions. Jimmy was brilliant when it comes to evaluating talent. Uh, he's as good as anybody. How about this, Cowboys? Yeah! Walker was misused. The Vikings failed to maximize his talents. He was a perimeter guy. He was going to be a guy who was going to hit the edge and take off and, and simply outrun everybody. The Vikings thought that he was going to be a banger, you know, inside the tackles. He got to the point with us, you know, Herschel started tiptoeing through the line instead of exploding. Maybe they should have uh, started refining the offense to some extent and, and try to make it a power running offense. Instead, in the offseason following the trade, the Vikings spent three days at a New Mexico retreat exploring the spiritual side of such concepts as team unity. Pecos River Training Center was a place that major corporations go and bring their executive teams. They learn a lot of things and how to work together as a, a team. That wasn't football. And to me, football is figuring out what new concepts offensively that we can put together to, to utilize uh, Herschel in our system. There was no limit, in my opinion, to what Herschel Walker could do. It was a matter of channeling and focusing and having him fit with the rest of your offense. Whether we line him up in the eye and swing him out or, or however it can matter, just get him the ball. They go with a quick screen out to Walker. Blocker in front of him. Walker still on his feet. What a move. Got away from Grant. I think it would have been impressive with Minnesota if they had used me. You know, it's like, use me, baby, use me. It got to the point, they wouldn't even let me run the ball. Walker averaged 23 carries a game in his 1988 Pro Bowl season with the Cowboys. In his three years with the Vikings, his per game average dropped to just 13. The general manager brought me to Minnesota, and the coaches knew nothing about it. So it was a, a management coaches fight with my job of acquiring players or getting them signed. Their job was to coach the players. Well, I probably should have done more. I was a firm believer in a passing game, and we had the players that made it go. But you can still use Herschel enough times that it would have still worked together. You can't blame the Vikings for acquiring Herschel Walker, but you can blame them for how they misused him.
Herschel Walker never was the answer for the Vikings. Despite his talent and productivity, neither the Vikings nor any of the other three teams he played for in the NFL made it to the Super Bowl with him on the club. I'm Brian Kenny. Thanks for watching.